Take those things in, you girls. Hurry up. Yeah. And it's so shall I want a word with you? Uh, no need to say it, so I expect you want me to take charge of all that. No, it's something else. But what better use can you make of my skill? I don't need your skill for what I'm planning at the moment. This requires the qualities I have always observed in you. Loyalty and secrecy. I'm at your service, sir. You know that ever since I bought you for a slave as a girl, you have always found me a loyal and considerate master. I gave you your freedom because you served me in a free spirit, and that was the highest reward at my disposal. I don't forget it, sir. And I don't regret it. I'm only too glad if anything I've done or do pleases you, sir. And I'm gracious for your grateful approval. <laughs> I'm just a little concerned of how you remind me of the circumstances. It seems like a reproach for ingratitude. Please, tell me briefly what you want of me. I will. Let me start by saying that you're wrong about these preparations. There isn't going to be a wedding. Then why pretend there is? Hmm. I'll tell you the whole story. And then you'll know all about my son's conduct, my own plans, and the part I want you to play in the matter. <laughs> Ever since Pamphilus was grown up and free to live his own life, well, no one could have known the truth or guessed his disposition, given the restraints of youth timidity, and his tutor. That's true. Well, the usual things that young men do. Their crazes for horses, or keeping hounds, or dabbling in philosophy. All took up his time to a certain extent, but he hadn't any special enthusiasms. I was pleased. And rightly, sir. Nothing too much is the best rule in life, I think. Let me tell you the sort of life he lived. He was patient and tolerant with all his friends, fell in with the wishes of any of them, and joined in all their pursuits, never contradicting, nor putting himself first. Well, that's the best way to steer clear of jealousy, win a reputation, and make friends. A well-planned life. Agree with everything nowadays if you want friends. Truthfulness only makes you unpopular. Meanwhile, a girl came here from Andros three years ago and settled down in the neighbourhood. The victim of poverty and the indifference of her relatives. A beautiful young girl in the flower of her youth. Oh dear, I suspect she brings trouble. At first she led a modest life. Thrifty and hard-working. Trying to make a living from spinning and weaving. Then, lovers began to call, offering payment. Oh. First one, and then another. Oh, human nature takes to pleasure all too easily after a spell of hardship. So she accepted their offers, and soon afterwards set up as a professional. Well, her current lovers happened to take my son there for dinner one day. Now he's caught, I said to myself at once, she's got him. I used to watch his friend's servant boys coming and going every morning and call to them, uh, can you tell me who was in favour with Crisis yesterday? That was the woman's name. I see. They said it was Phaedrus or Clinius or Niceratus, for those three shared her at the time. Oh. What about Pamphilus? Oh, he only stayed to dinner and paid his share. Oh, I was relieved. I made the same inquiry another day and found nothing at all to implicate Pamphilus. Naturally, I concluded he was a model of continence, tried and tested. For if a man's will has come up against characters such as theirs and remained unmoved, you may be sure of his self-control in his own way of life. To add to my satisfaction, everyone spoke well of him with one voice and congratulated me on my good fortune in having a son blessed with such conduct. To cut a long story short, my neighbour Kremitz was persuaded by what she'd heard to approach me of her own accord and offer her only daughter with a substantial dowry to my son in marriage. Well, I agreed and accepted the match. And today is the day fixed for the wedding. What's stopping it then? I'll tell you. A few days after we made our agreement, our neighbour, Crisis, died. Good. I'm glad to hear it. 
Dear me, she made me nervous for Pamphilus. Ah, my son was at the house all of the time with her lovers, helping them with the funeral. Oh, he was often depressed and sometimes wept bitterly. Well, I was quite pleased at the time. For if he felt this way about this woman's death, I thought, when they were only scarcely acquainted, what would he feel if he were really in love? And how will he take it when death comes to me, his father? In short, I went to the funeral to please him, still with no suspicion that anything was wrong. What are you getting at, sir? You'll hear. <sighs> the coffin was brought out, and we joined the funeral procession. Presently, amongst the women who were there, I caught sight of a young girl whose beauty was... Not bad, perhaps. And her expression so sharp was so modest and lovely, nothing can be more so. And her grief seemed to exceed that of the other women, just as she outshone them all in the grace and refinement of her bearing. So I asked the attendants who she was. They said she was the sister of Crisis. Well, then the truth came home to me. That was it. The reason for his tears and tender-heartedness. I dread to think what's coming next. Meanwhile, the procession moved off. We joined in and came to the cemetery. The body was laid on the pyre. Everyone wept. And then the sister I spoke of, careless of what she did, went dangerously near the place. Thereupon, Pamphilus, in his terror, let out the secret of his well-hidden love. He, he rushed up and grabbed her about the waist. Glycerium, my darling, what are you doing? You'll kill yourself! Huh. Well, you could easily see that they had long been lovers. She fell back into his arms and wept so confidingly. Did she indeed? I returned home, angry and disappointed in him, but I had no real ground for rebuking him. Well, I could imagine his answer. What have I done, father? What's the matter? A woman tried to throw herself on the flames, and I held her back and saved her life. What's wrong with that? Proper enough. You're right, sir. If you start blaming folk for saving lives, what will you do with those who do real harm or damage? Next day, my neighbour Premies came to me full of complaints. She had discovered that my son regarded this foreigner as his wife. Oh, a shocking affair! I hotly denied it. She insisted it was true. By the time we parted, she made it clear that she was withdrawing her consent to her daughter's marriage. And your son, sir? Didn't you... No. I still had no real reason to rebuke him. Why? Please explain. Again, he'd have his answer. You have set the date for this to stop yourself, father. Soon, I will have to adapt myself to another person's ways. In the meantime, you might let me live my own life. Then what grounds have you left for reproving him? He may refuse to marry at all on account of this love affair. Well, that would be a real insult and I couldn't let it pass. So I'm trying to find a genuine reason for rebuking him with this pretense of wedding plans. That is, if he refuses to take part. At the same time, if that scoundrel Davos has any trap in hand, I hope to make him spring it now when his plans can do no good. Oh, <coughs> I'll fancy he'll fight tough and nail for anything he's set on, and more to annoy me than to please my son. Why, sir? Oh, you know, evil mind, evil heart. If I catch him, well, that'll do. <coughs> but if everything goes as I plan and Pamphilus raises no objections, then I've only got my neighbour Cremies to bring round. And I have hopes of succeeding there. So, in the meantime, it's your job to make a good show of this wedding, intimidate Davos, keep an eye on my son's doings, and see if the two of them are planning anything together. Right, sir. I'll see to that. Very good. Let's go in. You go ahead, so I'll follow. I feel pretty sure Pamphilus will refuse to marry. For I could see that Davos was alarmed when he heard there was to be a wedding. But here he comes. I always was surprised we could get away with it like that. <coughs> the master took the news very calmly, but I dreaded how it would end. 
Ever since he heard of his son's wedding being off, he never seemed upset or said a word to any of us. But he'll say one now, as you all know to your cost. Perhaps he was leading us on with false rejoicing, suspecting nothing, off our guard as we were, full of hope, and then he would spring the wedding on us, catch us unawares, before we could put a stop to it at all. <clears throat> the artful beggar. What's the rascal saying? There's the master. What should I do? Davos! What is it, sir? Turn around and look at me. What does he want now? What are you saying? About what, sir? Don't be silly! There's gossip. But my son's having an affair. Oh, yes, the public are very interested, sir, of course. Are you listening to me? Of course I am, sir. I don't intend to go into that any further. I'm not an unreasonable parent. And his past conduct is none of my concern. As long as circumstances allow, I left him free to do as he liked. But today must mark the beginning of a new life. And that demands a change in his ways. So I'm asking you, Davos. And I might even go so far as to beg you to lead him back to the right path. <coughs> Let me explain. Any man with a mistress dislikes having to take a wife. So they say, sir, so they say. And if he comes under a bad influence concerning these matters, directs his mind, lovesick as it is, toward the worst decision. I've no idea what you're saying, sir. <laughs> Nonsense! <laughs> I'm no good at riddles, sir. My name is Davos, not Oedipus. <laughs> then I suppose you prefer plain words. I haven't finished yet. Yes, please, sir. If I catch you up to any of your tricks today, Davos, trying to prevent this marriage, or trying to show off your cleverness in the matter, I warn you, Davos, I will have you soundly beaten and sent to the mill with this solemn assurance that if I let you out, I will go there and grind in your place. Is that clear enough? Or is there still something you can't quite understand? Oh, I understand, all right, sir. You put it nice and plain that time. No roundabout way at all. This is the one matter where I simply will not put up with any of your swindle. Hush, hush, sir. <laughs> You're laughing at me, I can see. But I'll tell you this, Davos. Don't do anything rash. And don't say you haven't been warned. Be... Careful. Well, Davos, if I took in what the old man was saying just now about a wedding, I'll have to act sharp or this will be the end of me and my young master. This is no time for go slow methods or slackness. I shall have to think quick, or I'm not quite sure what to do. Help Pamphilus, or listen to him. If I abandon my master, well, I am afraid for his life, but if I help him, there's the old chap's threats, and he is not easy to deceive. In the first place, he already knows about the affair, and he's keeping a weather eye on me like the devil he is, thinks I'll interfere with the wedding. If he catches me, or if he comes up with a reason, right or wrong, he will send me to the mill. And there's another thing. This Andrian girl is pregnant <laughs> by Pamphilus. You should hear how they talk about it. More like lunatics than lovers. They've come up with this crazy story that the girl is Athenian born. There was a man, so they say, a rich merchant. He was shipwrecked off Andros and died. But his baby was, was washed ashore and crisis took the poor orphan in. Nonsense. Nonsense, I call it. A fantastical tale, but they seem pleased with their fabrication. Ah, here comes my sister, the girl's maid. I shout to town to tell my father. All right, Apulis. I heard you long ago. I'll fetch Lesbia. I tell you, the woman drinks. She's careless. 
Quite unsuitable to be entrusted with the first confinement. Shall I fetch her all the same? Ugh. Look at the obstinacy of the old fool. All because the two of them enjoy a drop together. I pray heaven that my mistress has an easy delivery and that midwife do one of her bungle jobs elsewhere. Oh, why, that's Pamphilus. Oh, and what a state he's in. Oh no, I'm afraid something's wrong. I'll just wait right here and hope that this doesn't mean trouble for us. Oh, what a thing to do. The very idea of it. It's inhuman. Is this what you expect from a father? Whatever's this? <laughs> He'd made up his mind to marry me off today. Couldn't I have had warning? Shouldn't he have told me before? Mercy me, whatever's this I hear. And as for Kremis, she'd already decided once not to trust me with her daughter. Has she changed her mind now because she sees I haven't changed mine? Is she so set on tearing me apart from Glycerium and ruining my happiness? Well, if she succeeds, oh, it will be the death of me. Oh. <laughs> Is any man so crossed in love and cursed in fortunes as I am? See how I am mocked and scorned, and now everything is settled and fixed. How I was refused and now recalled. What is the reason for it? Perhaps my suspicions are right, and they are harbouring a... <clears throat> they are, they are harbouring a freak that they can't palm off on anyone else. So they pick on me. Oh no, I'm frightened to death. And as for my father, words fail me. How could he treat something this serious in such an offhand way? Well, I passed him in the street just now. You're to be married today, Pamphilus, was all he said. Go home at once and get ready. Why, well, I was staggered. I couldn't get a word out or any excuse, no matter how false or silly or inept. Struck dumb, in fact. If someone had told me before and asked me now what I would do, oh, I'd do something, if only not to be doing this. Well, as it is now, what should I set about first? So many worries block my path and pull me in opposite directions. My love and pity for Glycerium, anxiety over this wedding, and respect for my father, who up until now had always been so indulgent and let me do whatever I liked. Oh, how could I think of going against him? Oh, it is terrible. I just don't know what to do. Oh, well, that sounds bad. I don't like the sound of don't know at all. Oh, but the main thing now is for him to talk to my mistress. Or for me to talk to him about her. Oh, it doesn't take much to tip the balance either way when a man's in two minds. Who's that talking? Oh, hello, my sis. Good morning, sir. Uh, how are things going? Oh, well, you should know. She's racked with labour pains. Torn by anxiety when she remembers that today's the day fixed for your wedding. Or when she's terrified too that you'll go and abandon her. Oh, how could I dream of doing such a thing? Could I really let this poor girl be deceived on my behalf when she has entrusted me with her heart? Nay, her very life. And I have treated her as if she were the darling of my heart. As if she were my wife. She is formed and fashioned out of purity and virtue. Could I let her whole character be changed through pressure of poverty? Of course not! Well, I wouldn't worry if it was up to you, sir. But suppose they use force. 
Do you handle it? Do you really think me so spiritless and unfeeling, so cruel and unnatural? Could I remain unmoved when thoughts of our love and association and my own sense of honour all prompt me to keep my word? One thing I do know, sir, is that she has earned the right to be at least remembered by you. Remembered? Oh, my sis, my sis. The very words crisis used of her are forever written on my heart. With almost her last breath, she called me to her side. I drew near, and you all withdrew. And then she began. My dear Pamphilus, you are well aware of this girl's youth and beauty, and how little use they are for her today in protecting her honour and property. Wherefore, by this right hand, and in the name of your own pledged word, and her lonely state, I implore you never to let her from you or abandon her. As surely as I have treated you like a brother, and she has put you above all others and sought in everything to please you, I give you to her as husband and friend, parent and guardian. I bequeath you all our property here and entrust it into your safe keeping. And with that, she gave Glycerium into my care, and death took her at once. I took up the charge. <laughs> it is one I shall not lay down. <clears throat> I hope not, sir. Uh, why are you leaving now? I'm fetching the midwife. Oh, very well. Go quickly. Ah, uh, but not a word to her about this marriage in her present condition. I understand, marriage. sir. What's that, Biria? Did you say Philomena was to be married to Pentheus today? That's right. How did you know? I met Dallas in town tonight and he told me so. Oh, this is terrible! Up till now I've been torn between hope and fear. Now that hope is lost, I'm left with a mind numbed by anxiety, worn out and exhausted. Good heavens! Sir! <laughs> you can't have what you want, at least try to want what you can have. I don't want anything but Philomena. Oh, you'd do far better to bridge yourself with these passions. So the same thing, throwing your fuel to the fire and do no good. Oh, it's easy for us all when we're healthy to give good advice to a sick man. If you were in my place, you'd think differently. All right, have it your way. <laughs> There's Pamphilus. I must try everything before I accept defeat. What's he up to? Uh, I'll appeal to him in person, fall at his knees, tell him of my love. I'm sure that'll persuade him to postpone the wedding for at least a few days. And meanwhile, something will turn up. I hope. Something? Nothing more like. Ooh, what do you think, Biria? Shall I go up to him? Oh, you might as well. At least that way you'll succeed in giving the idea that you're all set to be his wife's lover, if he marries her. Oh, go to hell, you and your insinuations, you rascal! Oh, why? There's Janus! Hello! Hello, Pantheless. I come to you in search of hope, salvation, help, and counsel. I'm in no position to give you counsel, and I've, I've no means of helping you, but uh, what's the matter? Are, are you getting married today? So they say... Oh, Pantheless! If you do so, this is the last time you will set eyes on me. Why on earth? Alas, <laughs> I dare not say. Biria, you tell them. All right. Oh, what's the matter? He's in love with a girl you ought to marry. <laughs> well, then our tastes differ. Ah, now tell me, Charinus, has there been anything more between you two? <laughs> no, Pantheus, nothing at all. Ah, if only there had been. Go oh, in the name of our friendship and of my love for Philomena, please do not marry her. That would be best. I'll certainly try not to. But if that proves impossible, or your heart is set on the madness... Set on it? Do at least postpone it for a few days, so that I may go away somewhere and not see it. Pantheus, listen, Charinus, 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 listen to me. 
I don't want credit where none is deserved. In fact, I think it improper for any gentleman to think that. And in the case of this marriage, I am far more anxious to get out of it than you are to take it on. Oh, I can breathe again! Now, you and Biria here do all that you can. Plot, plan, and devise some means of getting the girl for yourself. On my part, I will do my best. Not I am willing. Good. Ah, I can see Davos coming. I know I can always count on him for some good suggestions. Uh, while you were... Uh, oh, damn you! You were no good at all except to provide useless information. You can go. Oh, that suits me! <laughs> good heavens, good news! <laughs> Where is Pamphilus? Uh, I have news to rid him of his fears and fill his heart with joy. Something's made him happy. Oh, nothing of it. He hasn't heard of our present troubles. If he's heard uh, of his wedding plans, he'll be hunting all over town <laughs> for me. Hear him? Go talk to him. Where shall I look for him? I know. Davos, here, stop. Ah, sir. Good to see you. And Chariners, the two of you in the same place at the same time. Splendid. I need you both. Davos, I am lost. Oh, I'm no. finished. Now listen to this. My life hangs in the balance. Yes, and I know what's... Uh, oh, that wedding for me. I know. Today. I, I know, I know. Why do you keep on saying when I say I know? You are afraid you shall have to marry the girl and you are afraid you shall. You've got it. Well, well, let me tell you, there is no danger at all. I implore you, uh, free me quickly from my wretched fears. All right. I'm free. <laughs> Cremes will not give you her daughter. Well, well, how do you know? Well, I know all right. I spoke to your father just now. And he told me of the plans for your wedding. I thought I must find you. So I ran into town and uh, couldn't find you anywhere. So I went up a hill, I looked all around. No sign of you. <gasps> so uh, I saw your friend Biria. I asked her. She hadn't seen you either. Where was I? So I headed back and a suspicion struck me. There's very little put on for dinner. The master was in a foul mood. These wedding plans came on very sudden. It doesn't make sense. Uh, what are you getting at? I went direct to Cremies. There was not a soul about. I was delighted. Oh, you're right. Uh, go on. I waited. Nobody came in, nobody left. There was uh, no married women about a premises, no uh, preparations, no excitement. I peeped in. Oh, this, this is good proof? Does this look like a wedding to you? Uh, no, I, I don't think so. Think, sir, and we think. Well, you cannot understand me, this is certain. And what's more, I saw Cremie's boy and all he had was a pennant of greens and a few flakes of dried fish for the old woman's supper. Oh, I have saved two devils, <laughs> thanks to you. <laughs> you certainly are. Why? I'm not marrying her to him after all. Well, just because Pamphilus is not marrying her does not follow that you should. That'd be silly. Well, go, go and petition the old woman's friends. Fine. Fine, fine. I'll go. Though heaven knows my hopes have come to nothing more often than not. Goodbye. What does my father mean by all of this play acting? I shall explain. Your father knows that if he shows annoyance at the re uh, Cremies rejecting the match before he knows your attitude, he shall place himself in the wrong, and rightly. But if he forces you to reject the match, the blame shifts on to you, and the usual scene will follow. Ha! <laughs> well, I can face anything. Yeah, but this is your father, sir, and that's just the problem. And your girl has nobody to speak for her. 
Your father shall find pretext to throw her out of sat town no sooner said than done. Oh, throw her out? As quick as that. Well then, what must we do? We must accept the marriage. What? Well, why not? Well, how can I do that? What's the problem with that, sir? Why, well, absolutely refuse. I shouldn't do that. Well, I don't want any of your advice. Think of the effect. I sir. know! Cut off from her and stuck up in there! No. No, 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 sir. No, you are wrong. You are wrong, you see. Your father shall insist that the match shall be today. You shall accept. And so can disrupt his well-laid schemes without any danger to yourself. For it is certain that Cremie shall not give you her daughter. Only do not change your current behaviour or there is a danger she will change her mind. Accept what your father wants and so he cannot be angry at you whenever he pleases. I can easily fend off any wife. <laughs> That's what you should say, huh? Nobody will give me a wife with my attitude. <laughs> but don't do that because it is a danger that your father shall find you a penniless bride to keep you from the bad. Just accept calmly. Good. And your father shall not make a fuss. He shall take a little time to find you a more suitable match, and in the meantime, your luck shall change. Do you really think so? I am positive, sir. Oh, think where you may land me. Do not argue! Uh, all right, all right, um, all right. But, but she mustn't know about Glycerium's child, for I have promised to acknowledge it as mine. A hasty decision, sir. It was one she begged of me so that I would not abandon her. Yeah, and one we shall keep. Here comes your father. Mind he does not see you looking worried. I'm back to see what they're up to and what they're planning. You see, he is certain you shall refuse. He has been practising his speech in some lonely spot and sure comes to make mincemeat of you. Keep your wits about you. Well, I only hope that I can. Just accept and he shall not breathe another word. Young Charis told me to drop everything and spend the day watching pamphlets. Find out his intentions about marriage. I'm oh, trading this one here. Where is Pamphilus? With Davos. Watch it, Birria. There they are, a pair of them. Now remember. Pamphilus! Turn around as though you hadn't seen him. Why, father, is that you? Well done. <laughs> Today, as I told you before, is the day on which I wish you to take a wife. Uh, Neither in this, nor in anything else, will you meet with any opposition from me, Father. What? He struck down. What did he say? That is very right and proper of you to accede to my request with a good grace. There was I right. Sounds like my master's been done out of a wife. Uh, 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 now go inside and... Don't keep us waiting when you're wanted. All right. Oh, you can't trust anyone in anything. It's quite true what you're always hearing. No one thinks of anyone but himself. Oh, I've seen that girl and I remember she was a real beauty. So I can understand Pamphilus if he wants to have her in his own bed and not my master's, but oh, it's me I'll have to tell him. Oh, blow for him and blow for me. He thinks I have stayed because I have something up my sleeve. And what has Davos to say to this? Nothing, just as before, sir. Really? Absolutely nothing, sir. All the same, I really thought he... This was... has surprised him and thrown him off his stride. Are you capable of telling me the truth? Well, yes, sir, of course, sir. That's easy. Doesn't my son find the prospect of marriage at all unwelcome, given his association with this foreigner? He is perhaps a little upset for two or three days, sir, but he has thought it all out in his own mind. Very creditable of him. It was but an affair of his youth, sir. He only carried it on as long as he could, and he kept it all in the dark, took pains to make sure his reputation would not suffer as any good gentleman should. Now he is looking for a wife, and it is a wife he shall find. <laughs> but I thought he was looking a little bit depressed. Well, he may have been a little cross, sir, with you, but it's, it's a small matter. <laughs> what is it then? It is too, too childish, sir. What is it? Nothing, sir. What is it? Tell me at once. He thinks, sir, you are a little mean with your money, sir. I am. Uh, he, he said to me, sir, 
Is this it for breakfast? Not very much. And, um, and then, um, uh, is this a wedding for a son? I shall have to pick and choose between my friends if, if I'm to invite them. And, sir, if you don't mind my saying, you are rather careful with your money. Be quiet! That stung him. I shall have this spot right at once. But there's something queer here. Is he up to his old tricks? Hmm. If it means mischief, you can bet he's at the bottom of it. The fact is, Lesbia, as she said, there's scarcely a man to be found round here that will stay faithful to a woman. It's the Andrew girl servant. So it is, sir. But Pam Phyllis... What? ...has confirmed our belief in him. Oh. If only he were dead or she were done. By declaring that the child shall be acknowledged. I don't want to hear if what she says is true, it's the end. You make him sound a real nice young gentleman. Oh, we couldn't be better. Oh, but we mustn't keep our lady waiting. Come in, after you. Now I have this mess to clear up. Good heavens! How can he be so crazy? A foreign woman's child! Now I see. Oh, how slow I've been. Last I'm beginning to understand. What did he say he understand? This is the first part of his plan to deceive me. The child is all a pretense to frighten off Premies. Decided to speed up because you heard me outside the door. There's something wrong with your timing, Davos. Me, sir? Your pupils don't seem to know their part. I don't know what you mean, sir. If this had been a real marriage and this fellow had caught me unawares, how he'd have had the laugh with me. Oh, as it is, he's the one in danger and my ship's in safe harbour. So far, everything seems perfectly normal. She should be all right. Just see that she has that bath I ordered and, and get her that drink. Just as much as I prescribed. I'll be back soon. Oh, bless me. That is a fine boy for Pamphilus. I pray to heaven he'll survive. For his father is a real gentleman. He wouldn't have dreamed of wronging that young lady. Wouldn't anyone who knows you think you were at the bottom of this? At bottom of what, sir? Oh, she didn't give instructions by the bedside as to what was to be done for the mother, but came out and shouted inside from the street. Really, Davos, do you take me for a fool? Do I appear a proper duke for such barefaced trickery? You might at least pretend I'm the sort of man to be feared if I find out. He fools himself in this, I've nothing to do with it. I told you and warned you not to be up to your tricks. Have you no shame? What's the point of it? Am I really to believe your story that this Girl has born Pamphilus a child. He's wrong there, but I know what to do. Can't you speak? What's all this believes, sir? Do you mean to say nobody told you they were making it up? Did anyone tell me? Why, sir, you can't say you figured it out all on your own. You're laughing at me. Somebody must have told you for you to work that one out. I'll tell you how I worked it out. I know you. Why, sir, that's as good as to say I put them up to it. I'm positive you did. You have got me wrong, sir. Have I? Every time I speak, you think I'm having you on. And I suppose I'm wrong. It makes me afraid to open my mouth. One thing I do know, no one has had a child here. Quite right, sir, quite right. But I can tell you, there will be a child here before long time. <sighs> And I only tell you that, so you can't say I didn't warn you. You can't say Davos is up to his old tricks. 
You know, sir, a change in your opinion of me would be welcome. How did you find out about this? Why, sir, I believe what I hear. I heard a lot, and it all adds up. We hear that this Andrian girl is pregnant by Pamphilus, which we know not to be true. But she sees arrangements for a wedding at your house. She sends out her maid to fetch a midwife and a baby at the same time, for she knows it is the only way to put off the wedding. And once you found out the plan, why didn't you tell Pamphilus at once? Why, sir, who was it who got him to break with the girl in the first place, if not me? We know how crazy he is about her, but now he is looking for a wife. You leave it to devil, sir. Leave it with me. Uh, you carry on the arrangements for the wedding as you were, and we pray the gods all of us. <laughs> no, no. I'd rather you went indoors. Make all the necessary preparations and wait for me there. He hasn't entirely convinced me. And yet, perhaps, all he says may be true. Oh, it doesn't really matter. Much the most important thing is the promise I had from my son's own lips. Now, I'll find Cremies and beg her to give us her daughter. If she agrees, what better time for the wedding than today? <laughs> and here oh, she is. Welcome, Grammy. Several people have approached me to say they had heard from you that my daughter is to be married to your son today. I came to see if this was a delusion of yours or theirs. <laughs> Listen a moment. Then you'll know what I want of you and have an answer to your question. I'm listening. Say what you want. By the heavens, Grammys. And now a friendship which began in childhood and has increased with our years. By your only daughter, and my son, whose only chance of salvation rests in your hands. I beg you to help me in this matter and let the marriage proceed as it was planned. Don't beg me. It doesn't take entreaties to win my consent. Do you suppose I have changed since the time when I made the offer? If this marriage is going to benefit them both, have her fetched. But if more harm than good is going to come out of it for either of them, I must ask you to take thought of our joint interests as if my girl were your own daughter and I were the mother of your son. That is precisely the spirit in, what, in which I want this marriage and am pressing for it. I wouldn't ask Cremies if I weren't prompted by the facts. What do you mean? My son has quarrelled with Dicerium! <laughs> So I hear. Seriously enough for me to have hopes, he will break with her. <laughs> Nonsense. It's a fact. And I can tell you what sort of a fact. Lovers' quarrels are a renewal of love. Oh, that is exactly the situation I want to convince you we should forestall. Now is the time when his passion is cooled by they bandy insults before these women's Cruel ways and false tears can lure his lovesick mind back to tender hearted feelings. We must get him a wife. I am convinced once he is in a second relationship with a wife of good birth, he will find it easy to shake off his bad habits. <laughs> That's what you think. Personally, I don't think he can any more than he can carry on with that woman for long, or I can put up with his conduct. How do you know he can't change if he won't make the experiment? That sort of experiment is too risky for a daughter. But all the same, all the disadvantages come to this. There might be a separation, no. which God forbid. On the other hand, Look at all the advantages if he reforms. First, you'll have restored a son to your friend, and you'll have found a husband for your daughter, and a steady son-in-law for yourself. All right. Have it your own way. But I don't know how to stand out of your path as it is. Thank you, Cremies. I always knew I should hold you but in the highest regard. I what? say, how do you know those two really have 
Poor Moot. <laughs> I had it from Davos itself. He's part of all their secrets. He's urging me to speed the wedding on as fast as possible. And you can't think he would do that if he didn't know my son wanted it to. Oh, oh. You should hear it from him yourself. Say that us out. Look, here he comes. Oh, why, sir, I was just coming for you. What for? Well, we should fetch the bride. It's getting late. Did you hear that? <laughs> now, Davos, I want used to have my doubts about you, for I feared you may follow the common runner servants and play some trick on me because my son is having an affair. Should I do such a thing, sir? I was afraid you would, and so I kept from you the truth you are now to hear. Well, what is it? I'll tell you. I think you are to be trusted. You have found the true content of my character, sir. There wouldn't have been any wedding. What? No wedding? No, it was all a pretense to test the pair of you. Do you say so, sir? It's true. Why, that is a clever ruse. I should never have worked it out. Listen, Davos, after I sent you indoors, I had the good fortune to meet my friend Premise here. Oh dear. I told her what you told me just no, now. No, 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 no. I begged her for her daughter's hand, and in the end, I won her consent. I'm done for. What's that you're saying? I'm delighted. I'm delighted. <laughs> delighted, sir. <laughs> You'll find no further difficulties on her side. I better go and fetch her and I'll be back to tell you. Now, Davos, since your unaided efforts have brought about this marriage, I beg you... My own unaided efforts. <laughs> ...to set about reforming my son. I shall do my best, sir. You'll succeed now in this present state of irritation with this girl. You need not fear, sir. Very well, where is he now? Inside, sir. I'll go and tell him what I've said to you. <laughs> oh, Davos. You've done it now. Very clever, aren't I? I am sure to be sent to the mill. <laughs> I cannot beg for mercy. I have deceived my master. I have arranged a marriage for my son. I have brought on a wedding for today, when one was not expected or wanted. I should never have opened my mouth, or we would not be in this mess. Very clever. Very clever, aren't I? Here he comes. I'm done for. I wish I had something to fall on. Where's that scoundrel who's destroyed me? And himself. I admit it was my own stupid fault entrusting my affairs to a slave who can't keep his mouth shut. I am paying the price for my folly, but he shan't escape unpunished. I shall keep a full skin for the rest of my life if I survive this scrape. And what am I to say to my father? Refuse to marry when I've just said that I would? <coughs> How could I have the nerve? Oh, I just don't know what to do with myself. Nor do I, I'm trying hard. I shall have to think of something to put off the evil hour. Hey, you! He see me. Look here, my good man. Do you realise what a wretched trap your good advice has sprung on me? I shall get you out of it, sir. Will you indeed? Of course, sir. Just like before, I suppose. I shall do much better this time, sir. <laughs> and I'm to trust a rascal like you? Can you clear up this appalling muddle? Didn't I rely on you? And now you've pushed me from my peaceful state into marriage! Didn't I tell you this would happen? You did, sir. What do you deserve? A crucifixion, sir, but uh, give me a moment and I shall see daylight. Oh, damn you! I don't have time now to deal with you as I'd like. I've only got time to look after myself. Your punishment must wait. Is this credible or conceivable for men to be so heartless that they delight in evil and seek to profit by the misfortunes of their friends? Can this be honest? Surely not. It's the lowest class of men who have some scruples about saying no at the time. But later, when the moment comes for them to carry out their promise, are forced unavoidably to reveal their true selves. They hesitate to refuse. But circumstances drive them to it. 
And did you ever hear such insolence? Who are you and what do I care, they say? Why should you have my girl? Number one comes first with me. Suppose you remind them of their promise. You'll soon find that no scruples when scruples are needed, but all too many when they're not. <laughs> now what am I to do? Find him and protest the wrong he's done me? Heap abuse on him? Someone will tell me that gets me nowhere. <laughs> but it will, quite a bit. At least I shall have annoyed him and relieved my feelings. Charinus, unless heaven helps us, I have destroyed us both. But, but I never meant to. Never meant to? Well, there's an excuse at last. You've broken your word. What do you mean at last? Oh, do you think you can still lead me on with talk like that? Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. It's only after I told you I loved her that you took a fancy to her. The more fool me to judge your nature by my own. Well, you're wrong. Oh, I suppose you think there's some solid satisfaction to be had for taking a man who's in love and leading him on with false hopes. Very well. Have her. Have her? Oh, you have no idea how much misery and distress has been caused by that worthless man of mine and his schemes. Well, what's so surprising about that? If he takes his cue from you? No, you wouldn't say that if you knew me and my feelings. Oh, I see. You've just quarrelled with your father, so now he's angry with you and hasn't been able to fix up your wedding today. No, no, no. And to show you how little you know of my troubles, there was no wedding being prepared and no one was trying to provide me with a wife just now. <sighs> I see. So you were forced into it. From your own free will. You still don't see. Oh, I see perfectly well that you're going to marry my girl. Oh, do stop. You'll drive me mad. Just listen. He never stopped badgering me to agree with my father to the marriage. He begged and prayed until he drove me into it. Who are you talking about? Davos. Devos! He is the troublemaker. Why? I don't know. All I know is that it was an evil hour for me when I listened to him. Is this true, Devos? Yes. You, you scoundrel! Do you realise what you're saying? If all his enemies wanted to push him into matrimony, isn't this just what they tell him to do? Answer me that! I may have been disappointed, sir, but I am not established. Oh, so I see. We shall try something else. Unless you think that because the first attempt failed, we cannot right these wrongs. Oh, certainly not. And moreover, I'm pretty sure that if you carry on with your efforts, instead of one marriage, you'll present me with two. Sir, as your slave, it is my duty, hand and foot, night and day, at risk of my own life to serve you. If I sometimes fail, why you need only forgive me, sir, but I do my best. If you can think up something better yourself, leave me be. Well, that's what I want, but first, you must put me back where you found me. Very good, sir. <laughs> and do it now! Well, um, uh, that is Lycerium's door. Well, that is none of your business. And, 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 uh, just a minute, I'm, I'm thinking. Really? At last. I shall have a plan in just a moment. Whoa. I will fetch Pamphilus and I'll bring him straight back here to you. Now, don't you worry, my lady. My sis. Oh, who's that? Pamphilus. Oh, that's good. Uh, how are things going? Oh, well, she's asked me to beg you that if you love her, my mistress that is, that you'll come straight to her. She's longing to see you, she says. Oh, this is terrible. It's starting all over again. All this distress and misery is entirely your doing. She's calling for me now because she's heard of these wedding preparations. And how easily you could have avoided them if you only kept quiet. Oh, that's why right. fire him up. He was fine until you spoke up. Yes, indeed, sir. This is the very reason why my lady is so distressed. Oh, my sis. 
I swear to you by all the gods in heaven, I will never desert her. Even if it meant that I made the whole world my enemy. I sought her out and won her. We were made for each other. To hell with all those who wish to part us. Nothing will separate us but death. Oh, I can breathe again. I assure you it is as true as the Oracle of Apollo. Now, if I can convince my father that it is nothing to do with me that the wedding has broken off, then all the better. But if that proves impossible, then I'll see to it that he knows it was my doing. And that will be easy. What do you think of me? That you're in trouble. Same as me! I'm thinking up a plan. Oh, clever boy, I know your efforts. Uh, this one will be fully worked out. Yes, but it is needed now. It's ready. What is it? Make no mistake, this is for him and not for you. Oh, right. Well. What will you do? Now, I'm not sure, sir, that this day contains enough time to do the all I must do, so I do not have time to explain it. You're in my way. Be gone. I shall go and see Glycerium. And where will you go? <laughs> shall I? Shall I speak frankly? Of course, sir. Uh, here comes a long rigmarole. <laughs> <laughs> what have we done for me? Well, you've got a nerve, sir. Am I not doing you favour enough putting off this wedding? Oh, but all the same, Davos. Well, what? <laughs> Fix up my wedding! Don't be silly! Do, do come to me if you can manage anything. Well, sorry, but I haven't got a plan for you. But all the same, if there is anything... All right. I'll come. Oh! If there is anything, I'll... I'll... I'll be at home! My sister, wait here. I have need of you in a minute. What for? You simply must. Oh, be quick. I will be a minute, I say. Good heavens! Nothing lasts in this world. I used to think that Pamphilus was the greatest blessing for my mistress. Friend, lover, husband, always ready to do anything for her. And now look at the sorrow we've brought her. Oh, poor soul. More trouble than things are, than any good to her he was before. Oh, here comes Davos again. Oh, good heavens, what are you doing? What are you doing with the baby? My sister, I shall need all your presence of mind and quick wit in this. What heavens for? Take this baby and put it on the doorstep. Mercy me, on the ground. Why, oh, there are some branches there. Put them on the floor. Why don't you do it yourself? If I have to swear to my master that I did not do it, I should rather have a clear conscience. Well, that's something new for you, being so particular. Give it to me. Hurry, I need to explain everything. My heavens. Oh, what is it? Here comes the bride's mother. I shall have to abandon my first plan. I don't know what I'm talking about. I shall approach as from the opposite direction and you will follow my lead when I do so. I don't know what you're going on about. Oh, but if I can help, I suppose I'll just wait right here and not scupper your chances. I've made all the necessary preparations for my daughter's wedding and now I've come to tell them to fetch her. Oh, why, what's this? Oh, good God, a baby! You there, woman, did you put it here? Oh, where's that boss? Answer me! Oh, he's no meant to be seen, he's gone and left me. Gracious me! What a hubbub in the market! People arguing, food prices are up. What else can I say? Why did you go and leave me here? But ha! Oh, what nonsense is this? A baby? My sis, who left this child here? Are you crazy asking me a question like that? Well, who else can I ask? There is no one else. I wonder where it came from. Will you answer me? Oh! Come here. Answer my questions as I ask them, or else. What was that? Abusive? Where did it come from? Our house! Ah, oh, oh, of course. You cannot expect decent behaviour from a kept woman. I believe she's a servant of the Andrian girls. Do you think you can fool people like us with your tricks? It's a good thing I'm here. You will pick 
pick up that baby at once. No, don't move a muscle. Heaven strike you, dead and scaring the poor woman out of her wits. Do you realise I'm speaking to you? What do you want? Where did it come from? Must I repeat myself? Don't you know? Never mind that. Just answer the question. It's your masters. Which masters? Pamphilus. Ah, oh, what? Pamphilus? Well, isn't it? I never liked this marriage and how right I was. What a heinous crime! What's all the fuss about? Is that not the baby I saw taken into your house yesterday? Oh, you impudent rascal! It's a fact. I saw Canthara going there with something under her cloak. Thank heavens above that there were some honest women to witness the birth. If she thinks that'll fool her man, she's wrong. Oh, Clemmie shall see a baby and she won't give away a daughter. She will, all the more. Believe me, she won't. Let me tell you something. If you don't pick up that baby right now, I will kick it into the street and I will roll you in the mud with it. Oh, mercy, the man's trunk. One crime begets another. I hear it rumoured in town that the woman is Attican born. What? And Pamphilus will be compelled by law to marry her. Well, whoever said she wouldn't? What? A ludicrous situation, and I nearly found myself in it unawares. Who's this? But listen to this, madam. Oh, I've been listening to everything from the start. Everything, you say? <coughs> I've heard it all. You heard it all. This one ought to be done away with. This is the gentlewoman I was telling you of. You're not just fooling Davos, you know. I'm sorry, madam, but I have only spoken of the truth. I know the whole story. Is Simon at home? Of course, madam. Oh, don't you touch me, you brute! I am going straight to my mistress to tell her. You stupid woman, don't you see what we have done? I haven't got a clue. Why, that was the bride's mother. We let her know what she needed to know. Well, why didn't you tell me before? But don't you see the difference between acting freely and naturally and preparing the role you are to play? Oh. She preferred riches acquired by dishonest means to honourable poverty in her own country. And now she's dead, and all her riches are mine. <laughs> ah, here's someone I can ask. Good evening. Oh, mercy me. Oh, who's that I see? Well, if it isn't Crisis's cousin, Crito. Yes, it is. My sis. Oh, my sis. How are you? Oh, and how are you, madam? And I've been running quite enough risks. Please stop trying to persuade me. 
In my willingness to fall in with your wishes, I nearly gambled away my daughter's life. No, no, Kamishi. I must beg and pray you now to keep your promise more so than ever before. See how unreasonable your enthusiasm makes you. As long as you get to what you want, you don't think what you're asking of me, or whether there should be limits to your nature. If you pause to think, you would stop trying to wear me down with your unjust demands. What demands? For me to ask. You forced me to promise my daughter to a young man who is completely wrapped up in a love affair and has no interest in taking a wife. She faces the prospect of quarrels in the home and the breakup of her marriage simply so that he can be cured by her pain and distress. You had your way, and I agreed to it while the situation made it possible. Now things have changed, and you must put up with it. People are saying that his mistress is a free citizen, and now there's a baby born. That settles it as far as we're concerned. Oh, for heaven's sake, don't allow yourself to believe them. Their only interest is to present the boy in the worst possible light. All these schemes and false rumours are only intended to put an end to his marriage. Remove the motive and they'll soon stop. You're wrong. I was present myself when Davos was quarrelling with the woman's servant. Oh, yes, yes, no. I told me too, as neither of them was aware of my presence. I know, I know. Davos told me earlier on what the women would do. I meant to tell you myself, but somehow I forgot. You have no need to worry anymore, madam. Well, there you are. There's Davos now. Coming out of that house? Thanks to me and that foreign gentlewoman. What's he up to now? I've never seen anything so opportune. Woman, time, place. The rascal! Who can he mean? A safe landing for all. I'll speak to him. It is my master. What should I do? Well, thou art, my good man. Yes, and, and you, sir, and you. Um, everything is prepared within. You've done well. Oh, we can fetch the bride as soon as you're ready. Very good. That's all we need. <laughs> and now! Will you kindly tell me what took you into that house? M me? Yes, you! Me? <laughs> yes, so I said! Well, I went in just now. I didn't ask you when you went in there! We need pamphlets. What? Is pamphlets in there now? Oh, heavens, this is too much to bear! Didn't you tell me they were arguing, you wretch? Uh, yes, so they are. Then what's he doing in there? Well, what do you suppose? Arguing with her, no doubt. I must tell you something of, of much import, sir. There was an old woman just now. And such a woman, artful and, and deceitful. But to look at her, you would think she was worth the world. She had a very honest and, 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 and peaceful presence, a very truthful way of talking, sir. What has she to do with us? Nothing, sir, but what I heard her say. And what was that? That the girl is Attic and Ball. Did she? Trevor! What's the matter, sir? Trevor! I said, let's listen. If you say another word, Trevor! Take him in and string him up, quick as you can. Drama? Davos! Drama! Because I want it! Go on, take him! Drama! Well, well, sir, what have I done? Take him away! Sir, I swear if anything I've told you is a lie, you may kill me! I'm not listening! Even if it's the truth, sir? Yes! See that he's kept tied up. Drama! And listen, <laughs> tie him hands to feet! Drop. Take him! <laughs> and as sure as I live, I'm telling you here and now, I'm Pampers, what a dangerous game you've been playing, trying to deceive me, your master and his father. Please don't be so violent. Oh, Clemens, what gratitude. You should be sorry for me. Such trouble I've taken for such a son. Here, Pamphilus! Come out, Pamphilus! Have you no shame? Who wants me? How awful, it's my father. What's that, you? Never mind about abusing him. Stick to facts. Could any word be too harsh for him? Do you dare tell me that woman is a freeborn citizen? So they say. So they say! What impudence! Does he think what he's saying? Is he ashamed of his conduct? Oh, ho, ho. Does any sign of a blush mark 
his shame. Merely Pamphilus. I am to believe that woman is freeborn. And what about me? Should I pay for your misdeeds? Should I be tormented? Why should I suffer? No! Have her, keep her, and live with her. I am done with it. I'm a miserable wretch. Oh, you just realise that now, Pamphilus? Oh, what a miserable son! House, wife, child, you have found for yourself against your father's wishes. You win! Father, please, may I say something? Hear him, Simon, all the same. Hear him, Hermes, what am I to hear? Just let him speak. Very well, he can speak. I am not stopping him. I admit, Father, that, that I love her. And if that is doing wrong, then I admit that too. I surrender to you, Father. Give me your commands. Lay on me what burdens you like. Do you want me to marry? And must I send her away? I'll bear this as well as I can. But just one thing I beg of you, Father. Do not believe that this woman was, was fetched here by myself. Let me bring her out to meet you and, and clear my name. Bring her out here? Please, Father. It's a reasonable request. You ought to grant it. Please, Father, do as I ask. Go ahead. Anything to find out he's not deceiving me, Cremes. A father shouldn't be too hard on his children, whatever their faults. Come on, quickly. Say no more. Any one of these is a good enough reason for my doing what you will. Consideration for you, goodwill for Glycerium, or so the simple truth. Why, isn't that Crito from Andros? Oh, yes, it is. Oh, <laughs> Cremes, I hope I've found you well. well. You're a rare visitor to Athens. What brings you here? Oh, oh, oh just charms. <laughs> Is this Simon? Oh, it is. Ah, oh, Simon! Did you want me? What? Here. Is it you who says this Glycerium's a freeborn citizen? Are you saying she's not? You have come here properly primed, haven't you? What, what on earth do you mean? You know very well. Did you expect to get away with it? Coming here and leading young men astray who've been properly brought up and are ignorant of the world? Ho oh, ho! Tempting their minds with your false promises? Are you in your right mind? Tying up affairs of kept women in the bonds of matrimony? Oh, I fear she won't stand up to this. If you knew my friend properly, Simon, you would not think this of her. She's an honourable woman. She's an honourable woman! When she arrives here on the very day of the wedding, though she's never been here before, yes, yes, Grammys, very honourable woman, just the sort of woman to trust. If I wasn't so afraid of my father, there's a good bit of advice I might give him now. Imposter! What? It's just his manner, Crito, take no notice. Let him mind his manners. If he continues to speak to me as he likes, he'll hear a few things that he won't like. Anyway, we shall soon find out if what I say is true or false. Some time ago, a citizen of Andros was washed up on the seas and coast of Andros, and there with her was a baby, the girl they're talking about. And it was him that found solace in Christ's father. Here the story starts! Go on. Why is he interrupting me? Continue. Anyway, it was this gentleman that happened to be a relative of mine, and it was in his house that he told me that he was a citizen of Attica. And there too he died. His name? Did, did. 
fit it sprung on me like that. I, I can't quite remember. Was it Fania? 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 Fania! That was it! That was it. Anyway, I do believe it was him that said he came from Ramnus. Heavens above. Anyway, this was all known to a lot of people across Andros at the time. Oh, if only, dare I hope. Oh, quick, tell me, what about the girl? Did he say she was his daughter? N no. Whose was she then? Um, his sister's. It's true. She's mine. What? What is it, Premis? Mark this, Pamphilus. What makes you think so? Well, Fanny was my brother. Of course he was. I knew him. He left Athens to escape the war and intended to follow me across to Asia. But we were afraid to leave the girl here at such a time. Since then, I haven't heard what happened to them until today. Oh, I'm beside myself. My head's in a whirl of hope and fear and delight at this unexpected, immense good fortune. I too am delighted that she's discovered to be your daughter. I'm sure you are, father. There's just one small problem, Crito. Oh, you and your scruples, you tiresome old fool. You'd look for knots in a bulrush. The name, the name's not right. Ah, yes, she did have a different one when she was young. What was it, Crito? Can't you remember? I'm trying to think. I will not let my happiness be held up when the remedy is in my own hands. Listen, Cremes. The name you are looking for is Persibula. Right. That's it. I've heard her say it herself a thousand times. I'm sure you know how delighted we all are by this Cremes. Indeed I do. <laughs> and now, Father? The truth has reconciled me to everything. Oh, Father, you are splendid. <laughs> and what about my uh, right in regards to possess her as a wife? Uh, does Cremes raise any objection? You've a sound case, as long as your father agrees. <laughs> of course, there's... Yes, a... indeed. <laughs> her dowry will be 60,000 drachmas. Ah, I accept. <laughs> I must go and see my daughter. Cry to come with me. I'm sure she won't remember me. Oh, uh, why not have her brought over to my house? Oh, 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 an excellent idea. I shall get Davos to see to it at once. Oh, that's impossible. Why? There's another matter for which he's better suited that's keeping him busy. What's that? He's tied up. Really, father, I don't think that was a very proper thing to do. Well, I told them to do it properly. Well, tell them to untie him. All right. Quickly. I'm just going. <laughs> oh, what a lucky, lovely day this is. I, I just want to see how Pamphilus is getting on. Why, there he is! <laughs> Some might say that I think this too good to be true. But I want to believe it, and so I shall. If the gods enjoy eternal life, it must be because their joys are everlasting. So, my immortality is won, so long as troubles don't interrupt my happiness. But... Who do I want him most to hear the good news? What's he so happy about? Ah, here comes Davos. I know that he will be genuinely glad to see me happy. Where's Pamphilus? Davos! Who's that? It's me! Oh, sir. You haven't heard what's happened to me. No, but I know what's happened to me, sir. Yes, so do I. <laughs> you know of my bad news before I know your good, the usual thing. My Glycerium has found her parents. Well, that's good. What? Her mother is a great friend of ours. Who is she? Cremies! What a splendid news. There's nothing to stop us marrying now. His heart's desire. Can he be dreaming? And Davos, there's the baby. Yeah, that'll do, sir. I'm sure he will be first favourite of the gods. 
If this news is right to save my life, I'll speak to them. Why, here's Charinus, just when we want him. Congratulations! You heard? Well, all of it. Now, think of me in your moment of good fortune. You've got Crenys right where you want her. I'm sure she'll do anything for you. I haven't forgotten about you. And what is more, it would take too long if we waited for them to come out. Come in with me. She's talking with Lycerium in there. Dallas, you hurry home and get people to send her over to us. <laughs> well, come on. Yeah, Don't going, stand I'm about. Going. Come I'm on, going. quickly. I'm going. Well, there is no use in waiting. The betrothal and any other business will take place indoors. Give us your applause. <laughs> <laughs>